I've just pissed everybody off. <laughs> so the video, the video title is Two Strokes Are Shite and Why? Two Strokes, I'm sorry lads, they are crap. Uh, it is a, you know, a old design that should have been binned a long, long time ago. And the reason why they're slowly disappearing isn't solely down to emissions. Emissions do play a big part in it. But from an engineering point of view, a two-stroke is a bad design. So, why is a two-stroke a bad design? Well, I'm pretty sure we all understand now uh, how a two-stroke works. We have our transfer ports, we have our exhaust ports, we use the piston as a valve. And we have a crankshaft, crank pin, con rod, crank centre, main journal, so on and so forth. And then over here we'll have a reed valve with its little flurry reads it. So what's wrong with this design? Well, let's look at the pros first. Let's, let's just not kick two strokes in the nuts straight away. Let's give it a chance. Two strokes are great for certain reasons. Com uh, component count. Now, I keep on going on about component count, and from an engineering point of view, component count is at the core of engineering. The whole point of engineering is to design um, a piece of machinery or design a process or to design something to do something so to do work with the minimal amount of effort and parts and complexity that you possibly can so because I used to be in the army and all the rest of it we had a thing called uh, and the other people have been in the service especially the British services know what a hexamine cooker is hexamine cooker and I'll put up a picture now is just this metal grate that you crack into and you inside it has hexamine blocks which are petroleum based basically in a sense nearly petrol soaked wax is the way to think about it you break off the blocks they are waterproof they don't go out of date they're fucking wonderful you light them they're easy to light they burn and they sit in this little cradle and you can put your mess tins on boil the water do whatever you need to do and then when you finish you let it cool down you crack the whole thing back together and it's small compact and all the rest of it now, I don't know exactly when the date was, but I do know that, that the hexamine cooker was designed pre-World War I, and we still basically use exactly the same design today. You know, servicemen in the British Army are issued hexamine cookers, and they're fantastic, they're great. Um, but why, you know, the reason why it survived so long is not because no one could be bothered, it's because it's ridiculously simple. It's a metal, it's, you know, it's some folded steel, that's been um, hot dipped and then it's basically riveted and then that's your job, that's it. The hexamine blocks are ridiculously easy to manufacture, uh, they don't go out of date, they burn, they're the right temperature uh, and everything's just absolutely wonderful. It um, hasn't been replaced because no one can come up with a better idea. You know, nowadays you have gas burners, you know, that have uh, canister gas which is a pressurised bottle which again costs more money and you don't want to be carrying that around just in case it gets shot and sets you on fire. Um, there's a valve, dirt and shit can get in there, things can fail, blah 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 blah. So the hexamine cooker is absolutely fantastic because it's simple. And that is the aim of all engineers around the world, is try and do the same job in as minimal amount of parts with as minimal amount of complexity than you can actually achieve ever, as soon as you can do that. So the two-stroke engine kind of fits within that ethos of it's got fuck all parts, uh, crankshaft, bearings, you need bearings because they're replaceable parts, but you can make a crankshaft without bearings, you don't need bearings, just expect to machine your cases every, you know, re-machine your cases and, yeah. So you want a replaceable bearing, so there's bearings, there's a crankshaft, there's some very simple bearings, some plain bearings, some thrust washers, and one piston, brilliant, you know, one ring, try and keep it all simple, and the valves are all due to ge geometry as the thing actually works through its cycle. You know, there's no silly head, no valve springs, collets, spring retainers, seats, blah, blah, blah. No camshafts, chains, all that rubbish. So it's a very good idea. However, the um, two-stroke engine is a bad engineering design. For the simple fact is it's how you get to this uh, simplicity, lightweight and lack of parts and remove the complexity. Um, two strokes are generally quite small, uh, unless you look at two stroke diesels, but they are complex and that's a totally different animal, so we're not going to look at ship engines just yet. 
So we're just talking about mopeds and you know motocross bikes and the old MotoGP bikes, which actually were quite complicated. But the engine itself is quite a simple process. There's hardly any moving parts, but it gets this simplicity, or this simplicity arises from the fact that you're trading off certain things and you're doing bad things. So, with any kind of rotating uh, component, i.e. your crankshaft, what you want is you want a, there's a lot of friction surfaces here, high loading, high speeds. You obviously oil this, you know, you'd be an idiot not to. You oil this otherwise it's going to melt itself together and just explode. So we put oil in it, great, everything's fantastic, we put oil in it and then some dickhead <laughs> adds petrol to it and petrol is an excellent degreaser, it's an excellent oil solvent. Um, it breaks down oil and it washes it away. If you clean parts, you clean it with petrol, it's a very good solvent. Which is exactly what we don't want, that's exactly what we don't want. And that's one of the major failings of two strokes, is the fact that they have to have uh, petrol. It's not the fact they have to have oil, it's the other way around. You have to have your fuel, your solvent, your petrol into the bottom of the crank casing and that washes all your bearings clean which means that all your bearings are on the tit end of what they can handle. Two stroke bearings always overheat due through their heat cycles. Um, we try our best to try and mitigate that or move the bearings away but you can only do so much. Um, and that is the problem, is that you are sacrificing the reliability and the repeatability of your components to make this whole thing work. Same with your big end bearing. Another problem that happens is that you're not really oiling your cylinder wall properly or your piston rings. You're not removing heat from the piston. You do remove uh, heat from the piston with the actual fuel itself. That is a saving grace, but it's kind of like an afterthought. The other thing is as well is that you're using um, reeds which don't last very long, they're not a very solid valve. If you think about exhaust valves and all the rest of it, this is an exhaust valve and it is some of the best steel you can get your little dirty hands on. Where with reeds it's carbon fibre or bits of plastic, you know what I mean, it's not really uh, that robust and tough. So all these parts wear out and unless you're you know, unless you're using a two-stroke for stuff like chainsaws and stuff that don't get much use, that if they are under load, they're not under load for very long, and you want lightweight like a chainsaw and like lawnmowers and stuff, and even the lawnmowers are stepping away from uh, two-strokes because two-strokes don't have much of a life to them. So, at the end of the day, a motorcycle or a car, stuff like that, they are modes of transport, and you need it to take you where you want to go when you want to go, unlike buses and trains. Um, you know, you want to just get in it and go. And if this thing keeps on blowing up every fucking five seconds, then it's not a good design. You know, diesels, for example, 200,000 miles for a diesel is quite, you know, it's expected. Uh, 100 and 120,000 miles for a petrol without any major malfunctions. You imagine having a two-stroke diesel, uh, two-stroke petrol in your car. You'd be going to the garage every 5,000 miles, which is not what you want from your mode of transport. The reason why two strokes are so popular is because they're so simple, they are so simple, they're easier to understand, and because two strokes, are, let me put it another way, people fuck around with two strokes because they're easy to understand, but not only that, the parts are available. But that tells you something about two strokes. You try and get a cylinder, or even a sleeve for your engine, uh, your four stroke engine, there are not loads and loads of aftermarket versions of cylinders for a GSXR or anything for that matter, the ER5, you know, an SV650, stuff like that. There are not loads of aftermarket components. If you go and look, search up any kind of two-stroke engine for a moped or a crosser or something like that, there are lots of aftermarket parts. One, because they're easy to manufacture, so if you've got a factory you can easily start whacking them out. But number two is, it's because they blow up all the time. You know, you can go to a, a two-stroke parts uh, website and they'll have everything, absolutely everything. You can buy cylinders, you can buy different cylinders, different rings, different materials, and it's because they're constantly blowing up. You know, people want to mod their R1s and stuff, but when you look at what your choices are, you've got sprockets, which are a replaceable part, you know, they're um, a wearable part, you've got a load of bearings you can pick from, you've got 
some clutch discs, you've got brake pads, you've got exhausts, you've got a few things that are consumable parts anyway, where if you go to a two-stroke website, holy shit, they've got everything. It's because the thing just blows itself up. Um, you are uh, sacrificing reliability for performance, and when you start to push them to stupid high RPMs, there's guys out there who've got uh, stock moped engines that when they were released were under 5 horsepower, under 3 horsepower, and they're getting 20 horsepower out of them. Yes, they increase the bore and all the rest of it to get that, but still, 20 horsepower out of an engine that was initially designed to have 3 or 4 horsepower is absolutely crazy. But, <laughs> get ready to replace your piston every 5 minutes, because the design is inadequate. Now, what I want to talk about now is an al a few alternatives, or I'm going to do some videos on a few alternatives. But what I'll do quickly now, just to get you all thinking about it and get the, the comment section buzzing, is one thing you could do is what they do with diesels. So what you could do, and this is an idea I haven't really fleshed out yet, but you know there's a possibility for it, is have a crankshaft, then have a separate section here, and then have a rod, which is what we call a crosshead bearing, and then have your piston. So your crosshead bearing links the two together and your rod attaches, that's a really shit drawing. But basically what you have is you have your pumping section here, so this is sealed. So the way a crosshead bearing works, and you can look up cross be crosshead bearings, they're from trains and two-stroke diesels that are massive, the big massive engines that power ships have them. So basically all you have is you have a con rod like so, and then you have another rod like this and then you have a bearing, or a bearing that travels with it, that slides up and down inside a cylinder. So what happens is, as the crank goes round, the con rod is doing this weird oscillation like this, but this rod is going up and down, up and down, and there's a piston attached to the other end. And you could actually have a reed valve there, and a transfer port there, and then just do your normal two-stroke malarkey, and then what you do is you have your pumping in here. You'd have, uh, just say that's a gate, like that so that's just a, a seal and then you could have a plunger on your rod so as your rod comes down it squishes this all out into your transfer pot there's a way you can work this out um, you could also use the underside of the piston and n mitigate this completely but the reason why you'd want to do something like this and i will flesh this out i will get on old solid works and do some sketches and stuff and then make a model so we can have a look at it but the whole point would be is that this is then completely sealed from the system. You don't need this to pump anything. You'd have your reed valves here, like so. And then basically you can just fill this with, not fill it with oil, but you could have a small oil pump and just have this oiled properly. If you did that, you're still not mitigating um, your sealing problem with your rings and your cylinder, but it's just there are other ideas that could make this more reliable. If you did this, however, you would still have to use uh, premix. So you'd still have to use premix but you could lower your premix levels by quite a lot because you've only got the cylinder um, to oil. You've only got the cylinder to oil and maybe the bearings inside here. But these are linear bearings, you know, basically it's a, it's a tube through a hole. You know, you just have oil seals and stuff. There really wouldn't have to be um, any, you just have to seal it. You don't have to have a bearing for it so much. And the crosshead bearing will move with it anyway. But you'd only have to have just basically this rub. Now it would make your engine a hell of a lot taller, or a bit taller, and there is ways that you can, you know, you can optimise this, which basically means make it better. You could fuck around with it. This is just off the top of my head now. Um, but if you did this, you could make a two-stroke engine that has the bottom end, the crankshaft, the bit that usually goes wobbly and awry, um, just live as long as it does for a, 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 you know, a petrol engine, as long as it does for a two-stroke, a four-stroke engine. Now, you would reduce your top RPM for the simple fact is you've got added weight here, you've got this crosshead bearing or you've got this rod um, that runs through, so there is friction and there's a bit more inertia. But, for mopeds and stuff like that and other engines that don't really require you to go racing around like an absolute idiot, losing a bit of your top end really wouldn't be that much of a problem. And you also get rid of piston slap, although piston slap is usually never a problem with two-stroke engines because they, the cylinders never usually oval because they blow up well before <laughs> you even have to start worrying about ovaling cylinders and stuff like that. 
But this is just an idea, like I say, it's for you guys to start talking about in the comments or start thinking about. If you have an idea that's based on this, related to this, and you want to send me a drawing or a bit of card or something like that, uh, go onto the Facebook page, send me a message, or go onto my email address that's in the comment in the description below. Send me some stuff, and we'll, we can, you know, backwards and forwards and talk about what you can actually do to um, design something like this. And then I will make a prototype if we get a good enough idea, or I come up with a good enough idea or something like that. We will make a life-size prototype. So. Um, yeah, that's just food for thought, and that's why two strokes are crap. And you might think, oh, well, you're a dickhead, you don't know what you're talking about. But the fact of the matter is, is you can see it in the real world. Yes, the emissions thing is a problem, but even lawnmowers, where they're not under the re restriction of emissions, they're all turning four-stroke. Um, because it's the reliability, the two-stroke stuff. I'm sure there's probably one or two four-stroke chainsaws out there. I didn't, I didn't have a look, chainsaws out my thing. But, um, you know, and one of the other con uh, pros for the two-stroke is that it is lightweight as well. So, for, you know, your little glow engines and stuff like that, and chainsaws and what have you, it is a good engine. But it is an archaic engine. We've moved past this now. Um, four strokes are king for the time being. So, uh, hope I've pissed enough of you off, and I'll see you in a bit.